All right, lead heads, welcome back to another episode of the Talking Red AK Corner. This is your May edition of the Talking Red AK Corner, brought to you each and every month by our awesome sponsors, Mission First Tactical. Make sure you go check out Mission First Tactical's website and all the cool new products that they have been dropping. If you've been listening to our previous episodes, uh, we've been talking about some of the latest and greatest products that they've been dropping, such as their belly band holster. If you haven't checked that out, go to their website, even their YouTube channel. They got uh, some cool videos on it there at their, uh, their YouTube channel. I don't know if you know Mission First had a YouTube channel, but they do. Uh, and then their f- multi-platform, multi-mount platform adapter. That's uh, a pretty cool new invention that they've got that allows you to mount your kit, gear, firearms in uh, different odd places. So uh, it uses 3M adhesive, or you can use a Velcro hook and loop attachment system uh, to place it in, like I said, uh, maybe less conspicuous places like under your desk or somewhere uh, conveniently, inconspicuously in your car, in your carry bag, uh, in your shower. You've heard me mention that next to maybe your toilet. uh, If you want to mount a gun there, have one at the ready uh, in your garage, in your workshop, wherever it may be. Uh, You can conceal that or not, however you would like to store your kit and gear. Maybe it's a flashlight. You want to have uh, emergency flashlights around your house, around your office, uh, in your vehicle, Uh, maybe some medical kit and gear. It's great for that. So it's the multi-mount platform. Go check them out on their website. Use the code LEADHEAD. You're going to get 20% off anything at Mission First Tactical. Uh, And then, of course, seal one, Uh, this being an AK corner. AKs uh, are known for that corrosive ammo, and the SEAL-1 is going to help prevent corrosion in your firearms, in your knives, on your knives, your kit, your gear. Uh, It's pretty much good for any metal surface. You can put it on wood, you can put it on leather, and uh, it has a great corrosive and sealing and protective properties to it. SEAL-1 CLP, SEAL-1 and done. Go to their website, SEAL-1.com. And they've got their new cleaning rod kits available also. And you use the code LEADHEAD, get 25% off. So as you've been listening to our previous episodes, you know, we've been dropping our NRA interviews. And we had the opportunity while we were there to talk to a couple of uh, AK companies, AK manufacturers. And this episode, I'm going to be dropping those interviews. So we had the distinct pleasure of welcoming back C.J. Johnson with Pioneer Arms Corps. You guys uh, remember our very first season of Talking Lead AK Corner. Pioneer Arms Corps was our sponsor. Great sponsors, and uh, we missed them, and we were glad to have them back on the show. So we caught up with C.J. and the gang there at NRA and got an update on all the latest and greatest going on from Pioneer Arms. And you guys are going to want to listen to this because they've got some really cool products They've got an awesome 5.56 AK that they put out, and I've heard several people wanting a 22, an AK in 22 long, and it just so happens they have one. So uh, we talk about that. So another great thing that we talk about uh, is they, they've got a couple of different muzzle adapters that's going to go on. Uh, it's going to replace that slant break, and you're going to be able to put this adapter on and use pretty much any 308 muzzle device throw a can on there, uh, and they've got it for 308 and the 556. So those are cool. And uh, they're enhanced safety selector. So that and more we talk about with CJ Johnson and Marco. Marco Vorbib joins us on this episode. He's becoming a regular. I know you guys love him. So we really appreciate Marco stopping in and talking about uh, all the new things coming from Pioneer Arms. And then in the next segment, Professor Paul Markle takes over the show leadheads. So as you know, we kind of teamed up with Paul and Jared and Zach there at NRA and uh, they were bringing us the cool video aspect that we've been able to bring you covering the NRA and the Pioneer Arms, we did get a video of that, but however, 
this interview that we did with Eminem, Mike Meyer, Eminem Industries, um, the video is a little bit wonky. So I'm working on that, try to get that fixed. So hopefully we can get that cleaned up and be able to post that video. Um, but we did get the audio and we've got that interview here uh, with Paul. I'm, I'm obviously a part of this interview too. And then we have Dave with High Point. You say High Point. Uh, Lefty, this is an AK show, but... You know, at NRA and SHOT Show, we have weird pairings of interviews. So it's pretty much whoever's there at the time. We just welcome them in. They sit down and they start talking. But it was a good conversation. You guys are really going to enjoy it. They've got something crazy new out. Uh, I know everybody's been wanting this, but a 30 Super Carry carbine <laughs> that they've they've got. And we, we talk about that, have a good time with, with Dave at High Point with that. Uh, but Mike talks about their M10X, which is, it's kind of a hybrid. It's a hybrid AK where he's taken the best of a SIG 550, an AK, an AR, and an FNFAL. And, you know, he's come up with his own design there. And again, innovation. So really appreciate Mike and his company and all the innovative things that they are bringing to the market. Uh, and it is a complete U.S. made um, I guess you would call it an AK. You know, it's 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 kind of a AK variant. It's a 762 by 39. So uh, we've got those two interviews in this episode. I know you guys are going to enjoy them. So sit back, grab your favorite beverage, and oh by the way, we may have done a few shots before these interviews. Marco brought his flask of rye vodka by. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thus, the over exuberance, maybe in in these interviews, but you're gonna love them. I loved them. I enjoyed doing them. I enjoy bringing this to you guys each and every month. So go and support our sponsors and show them the love. Use those discount codes, and I will catch you guys on the tail end of this. So come back. I've got more for you. Introducing our new belly band holster. Whether you're hitting the gym or running a quick errand. Our belly band is one of the most comfortable and safest ways to carry your firearm. The center section allows you to carry most common pistols. Left or right-handed, this has you covered. A hard laminate trigger shield protects the firearm's trigger from unwanted intrusion, giving you ease of mind while carrying every day. Two elastic sleeves give you the flexibility to carry other everyday items, such as spare mats, flashlight, knife, or pepper spray. Two zippered pockets run on both sides, offering the option to carry smaller items, such as money, cards, or keys. Flush fit on your lower back or waist, easily keeping your setup discreet no matter how you choose to carry. Utilizing 3D spacer mesh, these channels allow for exceptional and efficient airflow, giving you maximum comfort and keeping you cool. Carry whenever you want, how you want, with our new belly band holster. Available now. Welcome back, Leadheads. We are at the 2023 NRA here in Indy at the official headquarters of Caltech. And joining us right now, making his triumphant return to the Talking Lead podcast, ladies and gentlemen, CJ Johnson. Welcome back. Thanks, Marty. <laughs> and as always, the enthusiasm overflows with CJ. <laughs> We're glad to have you back, CJ. Thanks, I appreciate it. The Pioneer Arms is uh, like you're stepping up your game. You're, you're importing some new variants. And we're not really, yeah, I guess you could say we well, stepped up Well, you're stepping we up a, your variety. We had, a, uh, we had a big curve to overcome uh, due to the fact that um, the original Pioneer Arms originally was uh, tailored to a less than scruple, scrupulous company and uh, basically sold, put any crap they could out on the market. And then when I come in in 2017, the one thing that, uh, that I said, other than the gun has to be affordable for the middle class, was that it's gonna be the best gun on the market. So we have six QAQC departments it goes to. Nice. Um, so we have uh, 
X number of guns that we're that we're still going over QA, QC and changing stuff on. So we don't accept it as it comes. As there's no such thing as good enough. If it's not a gun that I would buy and give to my dad, um, then we don't sell it. A couple of the, the variants that you're holding up now is we have our 556 five, gun, and uh, our 556 five, gun is the is the military. Um, push that we did that one and bring that one in. We have the contract within the Indonesian military. So they wanted the 556 five, and so we went in and did the contract and we went against all the major all the major companies went and did a uh, contract against it was like five twenty five thousand guns or something Holy like that. Holy shit. So we got the contract for that and it was five five six and there were certain variants that they wanted done to it. Um, so in the process, the, the one that you have there is not exactly the military version because the military one is railed out. and uh, It's probably full auto. It's, it's select fire for full auto. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't really care for the rail system and everything else because we, we actually operate. We own a Kalashnikov license, so we have the right to make the gun. So we, I try to make as close to a Kalashnikov as we actually can. And then we've been forced... Um, because everybody wants a side rail, so we've been forced to make some changes for the economy because, yeah. you know, the original Kalashnikov didn't have the side rail. Yeah. Uh, we do use the... But this is nice for the American market. We, we do. Our barrel blanks that a lot of people don't know about are actually Kalashnikov barrel blanks. We bought about uh, 500,000 of them oh, wow. that they had sitting in a warehouse. And at the same time, we bought, uh, we bought an entire warehouse that was falling down in... Um, Belarus that had the original laminate plywood. So all of our stocks that are wood are the, uh, the same thing that would, you would have found on a 1950s, 60s uh, this Soviet is beautiful Kalashnikov. Wood. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful wood. And we still have some models and stuff of some of the old oil stocks and stuff like that that we can get those. We sell those, some of our website, and we sell a few classic guns um, when customers want them by order so that they're set up in the original style. Yeah. So the 556 five, that I'm holding here, not available yet in the United States. No, it's available. It is. It's available in under folder, side folder, um, fixed stock, and they all fly mm -hmm. Yeah, the we have it wood and polymer. So also joining us this episode, ladies and gentlemen, we've got Marco Vorbiff. Marco, welcome in. Oh, welcome uh, back. Yeah, you're good. like a regular now, right? Oh, good lord, that's the last thing I wanted to be. But anyway, yes. <laughs> that's the last thing I wanted to be. <laughs> And then CJ has uh, his marketing vice president here. I have Graham, Graham Reinhardt, Reinhardt with me. You'll have to say your name right. Yeah, um, Graham Reinhardt. It's welcome to be on the show. I appreciate you guys having me out here. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Feel free to chime in at any time. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, how? when did you guys start importing the uh, 556s, Pioneer Arms? Uh, last year, actually. So mid, this is recent. Uh, Mid-summer, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This is recent. So they're out on the market. We have them, and like I said, the different variants. And then we've went through and we've done a couple of changes on it. Um, you know, we, we're not really going back and reinventing the wheel. We've added our tabs and stuff onto the safety so that they're easier to manipulate. A lo longer uh, magazine. We have release. a longer magazine released. Uh, we, the there was this Russian Spesnots that's an engineer in the United States now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, What's his name? His name is Marco Vorobia. <laughs> we should get him on the show sometime. And he, uh, good idea. he's one of the guys that <laughs> has, has been a Spesnaz and uh, that I've went through and bounced a lot off of as far as the guns to, tr to make it more user-friendly uh, for the customers and stuff. So we get a lot of input from him on how that the gun should look and everything. He's a matter of fact, the reason we have a, a pink AK that you can order off our website <laughs> is Marco's I knew that was coming. Oh personal uh, yes. pink camouflage gun pink that camouflage we have on there. Gear, that's great. I, you never know where you're going to wind up eventually in the future. You never know. It's you a toss-up. You mm -hmm. got to blend in. You got to blend in. There's something for everybody, right? Right. But uh, on a serious note, as I'm holding this gun right here, so that Leave it takes, to Marco to bring us down. Right. It, it takes me back to like 1981 when we had the beginner's preparation course in, in the Soviet high school. And as I'm holding this gun, this, this is the very first gun I ever shot. A very, very first AK. That's what it looked like. Really? Exactly the same with the laminate wood. Well, obviously it was in a 762, but uh, the yeah. configuration of it. Didn't, didn't the have the side here. mount. No. But right here is like, a, as you can probably see in the camera, but just a one little tear. 
dripping down my cheek, kind of remembering <laughs> cool. the bygone era. But yeah, this is it. And that's memory lane. And it's definitely an attraction for those people who look in the classic, you know, looking for a classic look of an AK. I mean, right. It doesn't come any closer than this. It's beautiful. It's one absolutely the, gorgeous. One of the big reasons we got the contract with Indonesia is, is the accuracy of the gun. We don't chrome line our barrels. Um, a lot of companies are, you know, military companies and everything else are chrome lined, but, you know, Pioneer first and foremost is a defense contractor. So we build, we build guns for the military. We build them for Excalibur, the largest uh, civilian uh, gun dealer in the world. I mean, you could buy tanks, helicopters. You went there and yeah, you I went did. there and you went there and shot all kinds of cool stuff. They shot tanks. Shot tanks. <laughs> so, so we make uh, exclusively all the small arms for. Excalibur with that and so one of the things that they wanted was they, they needed an actualized rifle because they were kind of ahead of the game. They wanted yeah, it has the boat hold open at all so mm -hmm. they, they wanted a rifle that was accurate and durable to replace the 74 because they knew what were what was coming up. So we created this it's on the market and not according to me but according to Guns and Ammo it is one of the most accurate 5.56's on the market uh, just as far as uh, the way that our barrels and the rifling in it and the coating. Absolutely gorgeous. I love it. And uh, if I may add, um, everyone I come across, I shoot. And I everyone add, you come across, you shoot? Yeah, meaning if I... He, has he a, shoots everybody he comes he across. Hasn't <laughs> shot, he hasn't shot me. So, <laughs> yet. <laughs> yeah. this I think that bacon's kicking in a little bit. Well, anyway, uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, no, every uh, one... One of these guns, the Pioneer Arms, that I come across and hold my hand, I usually go and shoot it, and I have a like a little um, chubby when you direction. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> little target, uh, like a standard 25 meter uh, target, and uh, I have to say that these guys, uh, they, you know, they they capable of really tight groups. So. I, would, I would challenge someone to find a better product. I mean, you have tight groups. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful product. It's affordable. Um, I think that uh, in general, we have absolutely hit it out of the park. Um, look at that fit and the finish, like specifically the finish of the gun. I know that there's a lot of other AKs out there with uh, what, like parkerized finishes and whatnot that scratch up so easily. Yeah. But just look at that. It just nice. speaks to you. Yeah, and that and it's like, got the Rod is right marketing logo on it. And That's the archer the for the guys who remember for the for September 11th, the uh, the real meaning of September 11th, and while uh, while Osama attack decided to attack the World Trade Center and stuff on September 11th was because that was the last great crusade that the Muslims did into Europe. So they went in and they surrounded Vienna, and they were outside of Vienna, and they were getting ready to go in, ransack it, and the King of Vienna of Austria sent out. I need. I need people to come and help me. And all the other kingdoms, like France, was like, well, we'll just wait until he dies, and then we'll go to claim it. Right. So the other companies and kingdoms wouldn't help him out. So the bastard prince of Poland okay. took his hussars, and this is what uh, Polish is really known for, is the hussars came in, and there was like 5,000 of these Muslims around Vienna, and they, were, they, they already ran out of cats and dogs and babies and dead people. So they were getting ready to surrender. They were starving. And uh, the day before they surrendered, the Hosars rode in with, uh, I want to say it was 50,000 cavalrymen on horseback and cut the 500,000 Muslims to pieces. Oh, gosh. And they left, and that was the last invasion. I mean, you, there's more into the story than that, sure, and sure. I'm not exactly right on the numbers, which I've been accused of before of yeah. having my numbers off. Yeah, you, you always like to add, like, an inch or two. On an that. inch or two. <laughs> I'm really not 6'2". Thanks, were, Marco. Were we talking girth earlier? Yeah, know. girth and. I like to get an inch or two girth. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so if you go back and read the history of it, it's... it's Circle 11, and the, the thing about our logo that we have on the gun is the archer, because Rodham is the city where all the archers were from during that time period, okay. and they were all of the, the kingdoms, even the kingdoms in Prussia and everything else, everybody talks about the English and the longbow that they had and everything right. else, well Rodham had the archers uh, that, that all of these companies, because back then a company was basically a, a uh, militia where they would go out mercenaries and you would buy a company for a guy and yeah. they brought them trained some of the best archers in company the world. Company of mercenaries. Mm -hmm. So Rodham is where the logo's from and the archer and it's the center thing and we have that logo. It's a great logo. I love the logo. 
And, Absolutely uh, love it. But you might want to mention the little number 11 underneath that. Well, circle 11, yeah, that's... Yeah, 11 factory. was you know, the factory number 11. Now, we, we don't claim, you know, we we stand on our own as far as being made in Rodham and stuff where the company go there. Now, everybody goes, oh, Fabric Roni, and, which is great. And Fabric Roni is, is a good company. And there are the government companies, so they're owned by the Polish government and does the, uh, does the guns for them. But the, the key thing to mention is that although you can drink away your strength and endurance, one thing you cannot drink away is expertise right. and experience. So this guy's been building these guns since 1960s. So we bought the factory, Circle 11, we bought the factory, several of the buildings, you've been there. Yeah. We bought the factory. Impressive. We bought the, the factory uh, out of Circle 11 from bankruptcy. And we bought everything but the name Circle 11 because the guy wanted like $50,000 just for the, the name Circle 11, which in hindsight would have been a good investment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we didn't do that. We already had the uh, Inter Arms, which was the other uh, company that was being there. And we already had the Archers. We had the logos. We hired the employees that used to work for Circle 11. We got most of their machinery and the building all out of the auction. And we got a ton of the old Circle 11 parts that were seconds and stuff. And those old Circle 11 parts were the ones that were in circulation, oh, 20 years ago, that made everybody curse Pioneer Arms. But they weren't Pioneer Arms because we didn't build guns back then. They were just old Circle 11 parts that we shipped out. Very good. So, interesting history, and our leadheads love to hear that. So I'm holding up another uh, offering here from Pioneer Arms. The and best, this or most, is, most original. Yes, it's a, I must say. It is a 22 AK. The only polymer in that gun is the magazine and the grip. Everything else is wood and steel. You can take your, uh, you can take your regular AK trigger and stick inside of this AK because it's the same. The safety is the same. The grips are the same, the wood is the same, the dust cover is the same, the sights, cleaning rod and everything else. We changed the bolt, the bolt carrier, and the uh, uh, barrel diameter, and we created a 22 trainer um, that's designed for anybody that wants to shoot with 22 and have an Acra Type 1. That's it's, awesome. It's an AK. It's, it's, not, it's not at a 22 price. It's, I think the... Uh, MSRP on it's going to be around seven fifty. It's about seven fifty. Seven AK brush. Seven fifty. It's a, because it's an AK. Right. Right. You know, and it's it's built that way, and and we built that one. Other than the obvious twenty two things, we built it as an original Kalashnikov. So we didn't do the rail. We didn't do any changes on it. I mean, or anything just holding else. it. I mean, everything is. It's one to everything one. is exact. Mm -hmm. Kalashnikov. And we have about five thousand of them in training companies across the world for companies uh, overseas that is that the main reason why this was produced was uh, for training would you say we have a well we're a defense con you know everybody thinks we build guns for the US for our market and we kind of get the leftovers yeah uh, and that's basically what it is is we're a defense company so we build guns uh, under contract for militaries around the world right. and so we I mean we get a lot of uh, flashback about our castings and stuff oh you have a 762 cast gun and we're like okay yeah it is cast we've got the four jeans that you can get with it that the really only reason we did the four jeans was because customers inside the u.s all of our military guns have castings in it but the 556 five, it's because the 556 five, contract required a four G. sure the other guns the excalibur guns the that are being ran around the world right now they all have castings in it and it's because we control every aspect of our product we don't outsource anything um, the only thing on that gun that you see is outsourced is that little yellow tag on it right there that's the NRA to say that <laughs> the it's NRA safe. <laughs> but we make tag. we make everything in-house from the only thing we didn't do on that gun was grow the wood so we didn't we didn't grow the trees yeah but you uh, cut it there was no nice ladies walking by no. so we didn't <laughs> cut there the was wood. no there was no wood no wood but being grown. <laughs> but uh, it, it's got a weight feel. I mean, a, a it feels regular, just like, yeah, just, just like a, a regular, regular AKM. AKM yeah. Except it's like a one tenth of a course to shoot. It. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and, and, and uh, so much fun. Well, so, what's it? What's it? The cost factor actually of why the guns was made. 
Uh, we made that in, in 22 due to the fact that these other military companies and stuff are doing training and they have females and they also, people don't understand the freedom that we have in America that they're trying to give away. Uh, these other countries, I mean, the guys that make this gun are not allowed to own a gun. So Isn't that the, ironic? The freedoms, the freedoms that we have and the stuff that we're able to do. So these other militaries that wanted that, um, we made that for them, made it under contract. And it's the reason, by, reason is because you have females that have never shot a gun. You have males that have never shot a gun before. So it gets rid of that that factor, explosive factor, and they start them off and train them on that, and then once they move from that, they go to the process of starting, you got to, it's got the bolt, yeah. it's got that last hold round open in the magazine like that. that causes that, yeah. yeah. Boom. So, we built the gun so you could uh, shoot it and not be afraid of it, and then work your way up to a 7.62 on it, and what that little thing you're looking at the end of it is, it's a little something on here, that is Pioneer's suppressor. And on the end of the barrel there, you may notice a, a little notch thing sticking out. That is a 5.56 five, uh, left hand, one and four, to an AK, right hand thread. Okay. So what that allows is anybody that has a, and we have that for our 5.56 five, guns also. Okay. That allows anyone that has a 5.56 five, muzzle brake that they like, they can put that on their... Put the adapter over the... Put the adapter on there and they take can... Take this off, put the adapter on Put here. the adapter off and they can shoot their 5.56 five, muzzle brake that they already have. Or if they have a right hand 5.56 uh, five, five, can that they want to put on it, they can put their can that they already have on nice. it. Nice. Not have to worry about changing thread patterns or anything else. It's something you've already shot on your AR, which we have a plethora of. And there's a ton of... Uh, AR muzzle brakes out there, and there's just not a ton of, of AK muzzle brakes that are out there that are acceptable or people that like. Are you there selling are the adapter? We sell the adapter. Okay. Um, it's thirty nine ninety nine is what MSRP is on those. So we have that one, and we also have a seven six two one that goes on that lets you shoot your thirty cal can onto your regular AK or your thirty cal muzzle brake that you already have that you enjoy. Onto your muzzle brake. Did you bring some? I want to order one now. <laughs> oh, you got some here. That's okay. the that's well, for the five five six. Muzzle break. That's the muzzle break, which we'll talk about that in a second. That's okay. that's our trigger group, which everybody loved the Tapco trigger. The Tapco trigger was nothing more than a, an AK eighty five trigger that the Soviets had designed, and we also produced that. But it's hand polished, so it's a lot smoother um, than a regular trigger that you'll get in. Crisper, mirror crisper. So this is the trigger group here. Trigger group, and it already comes with a side plate, so it eliminates the shepherd's hook, which is always a pain on everybody to install. Yeah, very nice. So people can go to your website and, and get these today. One more. Yeah, they're they're on a uh, they're on our website, and then that's the that's a seven six two for the suppressor right there. Nice. Got seven six two AK to standard. And then we Obviously have our 308 cal adapter, sub 60 with 39. Then we have our 556 to AR, to standard for the AR. Then we have Very our nice. This is that. I'm. This is like Christmas right here, man. <laughs> then we have our. This combat. is like what people have been wanting and, and looking for for a I long mean, time. I mean, uh, it's a process to go to get a, a tax stamp and then wait for whatever eight months sure. to get it uh, for additional can. But the ability for you to interchange between two rifles that you already have, it's great. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah and, just, and just finding that conversion, especially when you got, you know, the, the standard AK, you know, slant muzzle on there to find the adapter. Well, that's I mean, our AK muzzle brake. So yeah, this your, is the muzzle brake. Here. So that's your standard left hand, left hand thread. And that one cuts the recoil down because a lot of people are like, wow, your gun shoots hard. And we make a military gun. So we have a... We have a higher tolerance um, spring set up inside of it. We're a little bit overgassed. Uh, that's because we want the gun to be able to continue to fire. The, real, the really only changes that we make between our military gun and civilian guns is the bolt, um, obviously the sear right. inside of the firearm. Those are really the only changes. We, have, we run the same barrel, the same trunnion, the same wood, everything else on our military guns as we do our civilian guns. We just, you know, we just get rid of the select fire stuff. Now, the, this is the, the muscle brakes combat compensator, so this takes out a lot of the recoil out of it. It's designed for the AK. It comes standard 
We ship our 5.56 guns with that slant brake because everybody loves the slant brake. Yeah. The slant brake is horrible. Classic. Mm. It's horrible on a 5.56 yeah. gun. Yeah, it's not designed um, for 5.56 at It's not at designed all. for 5.56. Yeah. So we have this muzzle brake here, which comes with the gun. Uh, we call it the combat compensator. It looks a lot like a castle, but it has the rings on top of it for the guys that like to let's say deer hunt across somebody else's property. <laughs> it's real It's real easy to use mm -hmm. is to use the little notches in it to set up against the, the barbed wire fence. Right. Pull the trigger, cuts the wire. There you go. Um, so it's the wire cutter on the end of it there, and then you don't have to worry about the spall or anything else, and it gets you through the fence pretty quick. Get your deer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice. So you were talking about the can. Is this your can? Right. We designed that can, okay. um, and it's, it's about two inches longer than most standard 22 cans and we did that to quiet it down even more so it's a it's a suppressor it's not a silencer but we do make a a silencer also uh that can right there it takes it down to 31 decimals we're talking nice. at we're talking right now at 71 or so right so it takes it down to 31 on a rifle with you that, don't need you don't need ear pros with uh well ear pros anything under 106 or 105 but it's it has our standard baffle set up inside of it, but it's a tad bit longer, and that gives it the quiet. We made it a little bit longer so we could get it down on the decimal level. Now that's 31 decimals on a semi-automatic pistol. Gotcha. On the rifle, it's dead silent. Wow. So on the rifle, all you hear is what, what was is the word click, you used? Click tap. Hollywood silent. silent. Hollywood silence. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to we're trying to do away with that terminology. So leadheads, if you got something better to use than the Hollywood silent. Because we don't want to give them any publicity. Because <laughs> they hate us. Why should we help them? So we have another version of that one, which is twice as long as a regular, which is 12 inches instead of 6 inches. So the reason we have a 12-inch one is because it comes with a 6-inch too. Okay. So And the baffles in it, it's a mono baffle. So you can actually take your 12-inch one, it's two separate mono baffles, and unscrew it and make a 6-inch. So the 12-inch one is absolutely silent in a pistol. So no noise at all. All you hear is the pistol stuff. The 6-inch um, one gives you your 6 one puts you about 61 decimals, something one like that, 71. What's What are these called? That is the mouse, as in quiet as. Quiet as a mouse. <laughs> yes, we're going with rodents. So the, the Pioneer Arms Corps mouse. Mouse. The mousy, the rodent. I love it. And the price of those are going to be less than a tax stamp to the customer. Okay, that's awesome. That's a big deal, mm -hmm. by the way. Are these available now? They're, well, the boxes are being printed now, and they'll they'll be available within the next thirty days. Very are they nice. going to be coated with something else, or are they? They're, going to no, they're going to be. They'll be seracoded. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and this, it's this is an un, uncoated one right here. Still, in it's still in aluminum. Uh, we didn't go with any exotic metals because it is a twenty-two. You right. can take it apart. It is. It is fully cleanable on the inside and it's um, cheaper to maintain than most um, that huh. we found out we've we've done a lot of testing on that I've, I've got a lot of people is that, it user serviceable it is okay yeah um, we've also got a guarantee on it if you have a baffle strike or something else on it, if you destroy anything but the end cap we're gonna replace it You'll for be able you. to replace it yeah so nice. we're, we're gonna do that as far as repair on it now, are you coming out with a 7.62? We're coming out with a 7.62 and a 5.56 um, standard that'll be out, and we're going to go through the same process. We're not going to be the lightest, and we're not going to be the shortest, um, but we want to be the least expensive and the quietest. There you go. Affordable and... Affordable and quiet. And effective. The, the rule of thumb has always been, you know, you, you give up. You, yeah, you, you always got to give up something for something You give up else. noise mm -hmm. protection to be able to have a compact and smaller for the right. weight. Um, so we're we've kind we're kind of looking past that because we're looking more at the hunting market to go up on it, and you know, and, the, and ear protection is what it is. We're not really right. uh, designing stuff for a guy to carry in his pocket and execute somebody with. That's that's not who we are. So the way Marco comes into play on all this, with with it's different, no, I different mean, cans. Oh, the cans. Marco yeah, has no. Marco has Marco has a different set, and I'm I'm going to go okay. back. I'm going to go back to exactly why Pioneer makes cans. Okay. Uh, we're doing a lot of the machining and stuff in the U.S., and we're bringing a lot of the machining and stuff over from Poland. And that's why I say we make 100% of our parts. We make our U.S. compliant parts. 
Now we're actually moving the civilian part of Polish arms into the U.S. That's to include our own foundry that we'll have here to be able to do our parts. Hells yeah. So we're, we won't have to worry about anything coming from anywhere else because we do 100% of our parts. And right. we're going to continue to do that. We're building a 20,000 square foot uh, factory near our location. We're at, we're at like 9,200 now and we're just on top of each other. Yeah. So we're building that bigger factory. All the parts will be made here uh, for all the firearms. Uh, and then we have, uh, of course, the underlining, this is the reason why, is we have some military contracts, uh, some stuff that I talked to you about sure. uh, earlier, something about a bull cap, bull pup and something in the BMG right. that we're in the process of doing in a, in a new military pistol. And we're looking at the U.S. market in those. Nice. So as we have these machines that are running and we have to pay people to do that, not all parts are machined at the same time. Gotcha. So whereas makes sense. If we're making fifty parts of one thing and but the machine can only do ten of the other one while that at the same process, we have downtime on the machines. Yeah. So at the downtime on the machines, we're gonna use those to make the suppressors. So that means we're really only charging for the suppressors a very little profit on top of that. So you're paying for materials and construction. That's why we can come in and offer it as cheaper because we don't price. make suppressors, we make defense items and right. that's just how that it's an ancillary it thing that happened to work out and well it's great for us it's it's cheaper for the consumer and right. i've always what, wanted the what consumer I mean, great for us <laughs> well not necessarily Cheap. for you not necessarily for you big real estate uh moogle guy there <laughs> mogul guy but for the we ain't rest, talked in a while have we <laughs> for the rest of for the rest of us commoners like graham for instance <laughs> oh, me. wow Oof. or marco he's, he's an engineer so yeah and it took me for years to wonder why he didn't have a train but he's not that kind of engineer <laughs> oh, there we go. But he did there work for a train company. He did work for a train company. Right. So, Marco, you have uh, some items that we like to talk about, too. So, you've been on previous shows, and we've talked about, you know, the the relationship that you have with Pioneer Arms, that you've started the distributorship. Well, I wouldn't call it distributorship. Well, you, that's what, you called, what you called it. What do you call it? Yeah, I, I help as much as I can, or Pioneer Arms helps me, I guess. <laughs> no. Marco, how would you define it, CJ? Well, basically what it is, is you have a lot of small gun shops. Getting into distribution and stuff like that uh, for the different companies that are out there. I mean, there's a huge bunch of distributors out there. Right. Um, it's difficult for the companies that, that can only afford to buy one gun. I mean, distributors will work with you, but you're not on their list. Our guns are hot guns. We don't have our guns sitting around. We only do about 2,400 a month, and we've actually had to decrease that number to 1,400 a month because we're bringing back in the PM63. Bam. <laughs> there you go. He just said it. So with that, <laughs> that being said, we've had to cut our production in half to bring those guns in. But we make... To get the PM63. The guns yeah. cost three times as much as our other guns, so it's kind of a trade-off. They're very difficult to make, but it takes half of our production line to be able to do it. Right. So we're bringing the PM63s back in, so the supply of our firearms that we have out there are even smaller. So we have tons of small gun shops that want to buy our firearms, but they can only buy one. They're not really in the distribution chain where they buy five or ten guns to go there. So the guys that, that wind up buying 50 or, or 60 because they have seven stores always wind up with the product. Right. So Marco has a very small distributorship um, to go with it. And he deals with just a very couple stores that can't get anything Yeah. Uh, as far as the firearms and stuff okay. go. And so we, we, small work, now. we work with him. Well, he's not... He's, he's going to have to stay small because we only right. have... We're, we're not have, going... We're staying micro, not well, macro. Well, let, let, let me kind of... We had a conversation about he that can, earlier. He can right. go big with whatever he wants, but he can only go small with us because right. we have a very small percentage of firearms to be able to help these small right. stores right. out with because we have our distributors that we have to take care of. So, so some of the customers that I call on and uh, knowing that, you know, I guess uh, they know that Marco is like... a somehow tied to AKs or whatnot. They asked me to do classes. Do like a, a AK fundamentals and intermediate and then advanced classes and stuff. Right. But at the same time, like CJ said, they can't get any rifles on their wall and they often uh, dependent on like the representative groups that actually have the representative group interest in mind rather than the customer. Sure. A small, especially small customer. Yeah. So they approached me and uh, said, since we're doing the classes, we would like to have some guns on the wall. 
and uh, you know that's kind of my niche thing. You okay. Know? And, and but um, because the quality, the sharing the love, arms, sharing the love with everybody. Right, and the, and the quality of the gun, and then, of course I come across uh, many many variants and uh, manufacturers and stuff, and, but across the way. Uh, Across the board, so to speak, the Pioneer Arms is probably uh, one of the best, if not the best, uh, off the wall AK that you're going to get. Yeah. And it's readily available and uh, it looks awesome. And it you, does. It, it really does. You got various uh, configurations. There's plastic furniture available, some people like that. Some so, compatibility with other, you know, like Magpul and all that, you guys are seamless. compatible with all that kind of stuff? Seamless. Well, we are in a lot of stuff, but it depends. And sure. I'm going to say if, you know, most AKs on the market are not Kalishnikovs, they're variants. Right. Because each company did a certain way on the way that they were building their gun, and they changed this pattern for this size or that size to be able to go with it. One of the hardest problems we find is magazines. Everybody wants to make a magazine. There's a different width, different size, and everything. And the problem with that is, is when you cut a magazine well out, you know, if I try to cut a magazine well out that fits every magazine on the market, you'll be able to take your magazines and just sure. ra rattle them around. Yeah. So we have we have the popular couple of different popular magazines that we run through the guns as far as when we cut them to make sure that's compatible with that. As far as stocks, grips, hand guards, we're all good on all that other stuff. Our if you have an original Kalishnikov, our our bolts, our safeties, our triggers. All of that, all, all, of, all of our internals and stuff of the Kalishnikov is exactly the same because yeah. we make it off the original license. Mm -hmm. Now our trigger groups and stuff like that, they're hand polished, they're U.S. made, um, and they're made off of the uh, exact same as the Tapco did. Okay, I'm going to go back to Tapco a lot because okay. those guys made some good products. Sure. Um, but it's it's the AK-85 trigger is what the original trigger was. So when we take it and we we bring it back in, we've got it polished. Um, so it's it's a smoother trigger to go with it, is, and that fits. Is yeah. this the trigger that comes in it, or is this an that's aftermarket the, Nope, that's upgrade. the trigger that comes in our gun. Okay. So we do all of the upgrades and stuff, all of these parts that we sell, um, uh, additional and stuff, we do that. Like our, our magazines are U.S.-made magazines, and the guy that helped us with those is, is Dan Redman, and you guys may know him because he's the guy that designed the original Tapco Max. Mm-hmm. So we have our modes and stuff that we own. We make our own U.S. magazines with it. It's a compliant part as we're going through this transition uh, to bring stuff in. But but we you know we still make the product and everything with it. Nice. Now, are there plans for a uh, five four five? Ah, look at that head go. He's like ah. Okay. You gotta you, ask. You, you know, know AK. Uh, that's yeah. exactly what the listeners are asking right yeah, now. You got you. You're AK. I mean, there's 75 guys that are going to buy a 74. And out of those I seven, don't know. and out of those seventy-five guns, okay, well, we do, we do twenty-five hundred guns a month. We do five thousand military guns overseas a month. Yeah, and then we do about twenty-four guns here in the states that we've had to cut down because of the of the uh, PM sixty-three. Right. So we're doing about fourteen hundred guns a month now. Now we'll have to retool, reline to be able to bring the five four fives in. We already have a five four five. We already make a five four five. Right. I knew that. Yeah. It's just not, a, not here. This is not a market for it. Yeah, just not okay, here. Everybody says, I want a 545, I want a 545. You know, we, we make a 545, you bring it in, six guys buy it, 75 guys wanted it, 30 guys are going to say that they had a friend that had an uncle that was in a basement that saw one that fell off the shelf. So I don't know, since our listeners have been listening to Marco, I mean, that's his that's his go-to, well, the 545. I mean, but that, you can't get ammo. Right. It's, the my, it's my favorite. It there is no it ammo. It doesn't spill out to somebody else's. Mm. There is no ammo, and the 556 five, gun mm -hmm. is the new yeah. high speed 545 five? accurate 545. Mm -hmm. five. <laughs> so, our 556 five, guns replace it. As a matter of fact, that's a good dance around the uh, question. Answer. Well, the, I like the question that. is so we're not going to do we're not going to do a 74 until ammo becomes available, okay? Because it's just going to distract away from that's our legit. other guns that are. That's so. a legit answer, and, and, I'll and accept also, that. again, good. I'm referring to, and I like, uh, I don't know if the listeners already know that I'm not just a, like a history lover, I'm more like a nerd when it comes down to history. 
and the Poland. You're like a savant, is what I would say. <laughs> you're, you're more of a savant. <laughs> Isn't like savant like slightly artistic? I guess a little. I, that means say? that means you're stupid, but it really means you're a little right. retarded. <laughs> so I'll I say think it. The numbers that floating around my hand and stuff. The Rain Man. <laughs> the Rain, the Rain, Rain Man. Man. But anyway, so <laughs> if you go back and uh, look at the uh, Polish production, the Polish guns and stuff, and of course they have. A whale of knowledge and expertise how to build right. 762 guns that have been doing it since 60s and stuff. You know, so we're probably the closest copies to original, or maybe even better than the original uh, uh, the Soviet guns. But at the same time, when they joined NATO and uh, switched to 556 uh, caliber, they remain uh, AK sort of. They produce, they continue to produce AKs in the barrel rifles that now became main battle rifle across the, the Polish military. So that's the expertise, it's right there. 505 is something that they might have started doing something experimentally in, back in the 80s, but then then the wool came down. Yes, yes, <laughs> AK-74 is my favorite thing, but uh, it doesn't mean that it's all the way all the way across the market. Stick with your guns, Marco. You like the 545. Come on. I love it. There's a lot of guns there's a lot of guns that they don't make that you can't get ammo for. That's true. You know, and that makes a lot of sense too. Uh, so I mean, uh, you, you guys saw me holding up Marco's book. You can go to Amazon, you can get Marco's book all about the AK forty seven. Got a great history about it. And Marco, if you listen to the AK corner, you know that he he actually had a sit-down dinner with the man himself, Mikhail Kalashnikov. I did. I did. And I was fortunate uh, enough to actually meet the man. I uh, have a dinner at his summer house. Um, and I didn't know. I don't know if I finished the plate. I was just there absorbing the man's wisdom and uh, his stories and stuff. And um, I guess the one thing that I could take away from it is how down to earth this world famous person was yeah just as if we were talking as if we knew each well other he was a gun people. guy so yeah that's, 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 that's the difference that's yeah. True. That's true. yeah so you guys can get it at amazon like i said and if you're here at the nra marco is here at the caltech booth and he will sign your copy of it so we made an announcement on the podcast uh several episodes ago so if you're here i know several lead heads are supposed to be here they're supposed to be coming by to get their autographed copy. <laughs> I'm going to be the first, though, Marco, and uh, I want you to sign mine, if you would, please. Now, if, if you're not here and you have one and you want to get it, you want to get it signed, just look up Marco's address. And <laughs> come to Don't. His, come to his house anytime that you want. Anytime. His address is. At midnight. <laughs> and he will uh, he will gladly come out in his robe and sign it yeah. for you. Yeah, might as well. I got the parking lot in my backyard. That there some you guys go. Already did. Now, you want to sign on the front, or do you want to sign it, like on your picture somewhere? You tell me. How you you, you do me a special one. You I'll let you pick. This is gonna be special for me. Everything about you, is special, Marty. Right. <laughs> I, I kind of follow that savant category of. <laughs> So we set, That's a good one. We sent 10 guns up to help Mark. Was it 10? 10 or 12? 12. We sent guns. We sent 12 guns up for Marco. Variants. Uh, a couple of different variants. Side folders, under folders. Um, 7.62 for him to use for his classes and training. So for the individuals that don't right, have... sign it up here too. <laughs> I'm going to get two autographs on mine because so I can't see that. He's going to be selling them CK. <laughs> this is the only one he ever signed twice. Right? I'll, I'll have the only one. So I, we sent a, we sent guns up there to help them train it, and then we still in the Daytona Beach area, uh, which Florida's changed over to Constitution Carrier, uh, which is good. But we right. still have the the big three East combined with Pioneer Arms. We still do free safety courses, free training classes, and we've also have a AK three gun, uh, which will be started here within about the next forty days or so. Uh, be a local competition to come down. And then we'll also be doing... Uh, well, that'd be fun. Well, 100% of the money goes to the food bank. Okay. So everything out there, I've got a couple other companies I'm going to partner up with. I think you... One of them, Adam Ranola works at. So... Uh, who? Uh, big, big, Adam guy, who? Big, big guy named Adam. Adam who? So... Big Tiny? So uh, <laughs> got a couple other companies that are involved in it and stuff. And it's just going to be... Well, that'd be fun. It's going to be a uh, very inexpensive, you know, 20, 25 bucks for individuals to yeah. come out and shoot for the day. 
and all the money, you know, we'll have some nice prizes for them, a nice prize table, but all the money will go to the food bank. Um, and then we'll have the opportunity for classes and stuff to go on for that where we'll, we'll have some of the armorers and stuff to be able to do that stuff. And when is that? Say the dates again? You know, we're, there's no lockdown dates. About the next 30 to 45 days, okay. we'll, we'll kick out the first one. You're gonna like put it on social media so people can. We're gonna put it out on Big Three. Invite, okay. invite a couple. Well, of let me know and I'll put a, a word out to the Leadheads. Let them know too. And we also, uh, Pioneer Arms is also going to be offering a factory uh, armors course that you'll be able to come down and do. We'll have guys that are going over to be trained at the armor school for Poland, and then you'll be able to come into our shop and do armor school, and it'll be a certification from Rodham. Um, that's awesome from train for that for armor school to be able to be about a two-day course heck yeah to be able to do that well that set up and you'll come in and actually build your own gun as an armor have you put Graham through that yet course uh, I think it should be a prerequisite for Graham to, I agree to go with through that. I, I agree with Graham's that. problem is he's he's the type of guy that'll stick a four-wheel drive truck and not know how to turn it onto four-wheel drive and walk off and leave it <laughs> especially if it's his boss's hundred thousand dollar pickup truck he'll leave it stuck in the mud somewhere Graham, is he calling you out right now? He's calling me out right now. They're like, rot roll. <laughs> Shit, they're going there. So he's he's that type of guy. He's a, uh, it's kind of like you. He's a Honda, Honda Civic guy. Yeah, that's what my car is, a preference, definitely. <laughs> so tell everybody Pioneer Arms Corps where they can get in touch with you guys. They can go look at the gun porn of all your, your products. You can go to the website. We, we carry a, a large amount of PPS 43 parts and stuff on our website. We're starting to bring in more AK parts that we're carrying on there, but it's PioneerArmsUS.com, and that's our website. Um, we have some, we have a few guns that may have a little chip in the stock or something else that I won't sell anywhere else. We sell as blend guns. Oh, okay. That you can go in there and buy directly from us. We have a uh, lifetime warranty on our guns. So, and I pride myself on you know the 15-day program, and I just fired two guys, but or uh, the five-day program. I just fired two guys because it took over 15 days to get resolute to a customer back on a firearm. Uh, but we we take pride in taking care of the guns, take care of the customer. We we are the little guy, so we know what it is for the little guy with the sure. firearm, and, and we're getting the best product out there to them. And we're going to support them and back them up all the way through this process with the firearm. Very nice. And Graham, the social meds? Social media, you have Pioneer Arms USA. Um, you can also follow us on Facebook. Uh, and Instagram specifically. On the grams. On the grams, exactly. Instagram. There you go. Mm -hmm. And Marco's not on the grams. <laughs> no. You can't find him on the grams. You can't find There's no website. Marco's on the calories. No, the calories. Marco's, <laughs> yeah. Marco's, uh, Marco's on the rye. No, Marco. Yeah, Marco. Uh, <laughs> He's on the bacon. My principal. <laughs> the less you know, the longer you live. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. But you can go to Amazon. And you can put in Marco, and it's V-O-R-O-B-I-E-V, and it will pull up uh, not only the AK-47 survival and evolution of the world's most prolific gun, but it will also pull up your other... Right, the shooter's book, guide. The shooter's guide that you have. Kind of, that one is... And then CJ Soon... Well, no, I have... You can get my book on there, too. It's Well, we're going to talk about that, but soon you're going to get Marco's, like you did, an autobiography... On Amazon, because no. Marco's working on that autobiography, no, ladies and gentlemen. Not. And now, CJ, <laughs> no, no, your book, The Carnivore. Yeah, my book was an accident that it even got published. Uh, the story on point came out. That's a history of the ground war in Iraq. And then Bill, uh, Bob Brown from Social Fortune Magazine knew one of the guys that wrote it, and he took excerpts out of that. Excerpts out of it, not excerpts. <laughs> Excursions? <laughs> Excursions. Well, what you thinking uh, about them? But he took... He took a lot of the stuff out of it and actually put it in Soldier Fortune magazines. And then uh, Jim Tarr actually grabbed those articles and put them put them in a book format and then asked me if I would like to do some comments on it because the book was going to get published. So that's that's kind of how the book came about. It put a little bit about my my history on there, but it's in it's on uh, Amazon. You can get it on the uh, ebooks and stuff that they got on there also and it's it's memoirs of a cavalry scout, and I think the first edition was America's deadliest, deadliest soldier for uh, uh, for the ground war going in Iraq, which really should have been the 
That was called Carnivore. Yeah, it was Carnivore, America's Deadly. Okay. Both, of them, a... both of them list are on there, but that's kind of the other I got stuff you. Going. I got you. I got you. Okay. Carnivore was named with the Bradley, and, and it's really the deadliest soldier because it's the 25 millimeter and coax is what ate everything up, not necessarily me. There you go, Leadheads. And, and Graham, pleasure meeting you, brothers. Nice to meet you as well. All right, Leadheads, we'll be back with more from the NRA 2023 here at the Caltech booth, the official lead course. Oliver is a personal protection and security specialist. He cut his teeth as a United States Marine before leaving the Corps to provide private contract work for agencies outside the military and private security work. He's always looking for the upper hand and unexpected advantage. Keltex P50 provides all of that and then some. This innovative pistol chambered in 5.7 has a 50 round magazine capacity in its semi automatic platform. Its small caliber high velocity ammunition is a great personal protection weapon and is even used by law enforcement agencies and the Secret Service. Oliver likes that the P50 has an AR like charging handle and that it can be slung for access and shooting stability. The P50 comes fitted with a threaded barrel if he wants to add a suppressor, and the upper and lower Picatinny rails let him accessorize it with lights and optics. This pistol, it redefines cool. Innovation. Performance. Kelton. All right, freaks and freakettes. Oh, man. Professor Paul has taken over the lead quarters. I've taken over the lead quarters. The Talking Lead Podcast <laughs> is been, now being run by Professor, Professor Paul Markle, the Pimp Hand of America. Ladies and gentlemen. That's right. I'm Pimp Hand of America. It wasn't a job I was looking for, but it was a job I accepted because I knew this country needs a slap. And I'm here to give it to him. Right upside the head. That's Waka. awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, indeed. indeed. We, do, we do need the. We need that. We need it as a... Shamaka uh, right. waka waka. So uh, I've got with me, I've got Dave. What's Dave. Up, What's up, Dave? Dave's not here. No, Dave Dave's is here. here. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm here, but not, Dave's not here. Man. Dave. We've got Dave from High Point Firearms, and uh, it is, you're, you're thinking, like, is this... Oh, look at that. That's me. Is, is this sometime in the, in the future? Are we in the future right now? I hate you. <laughs> both, both of you. God. Oh, yeah. Inside jokes. Uh, inside jokes. Inside the jokes. Best. Never, never going to die. <laughs> all right, all right. Who remembers The Office? Michael Scott, and and you know that's was, still out. And he says, and he's like, <laughs> and he's like, uh, oh, I, I love inside jokes. I'd like to be a part of one someday. <laughs> someday, yeah. <laughs> Inside jokes are great. I'd love to be a part of one. I'd, I'd love to be a part of one someday. <laughs> yeah, that one's never going to go away. That's oh, the greatest uh, character of all time. So oh, absolutely. Yes, it is. So, Dave, what, what do we have here? What is this black beauty that we have here? What am I holding? I mean, obviously, you look at it, you know, it's a high point carbine, but the real deal is that is our new, latest and greatest 30 super carry carbine. That might be the, the most intelligent use of the 30 super carry to, <laughs> to exist. <laughs> no. <laughs> Look at the magazine. Look at the gun. All right. So I, I know I know how you guys are. Right. You around the magazine. <laughs> See, they build the magazine first, and then they design the gun around. They overbuild the You're gun killed. around the magazine. Yes. You're the killed. magazine's well protected. Yes. Yeah. It's not going to go anywhere. Yes. No, so um, well, all right. That's what they. That's what they did with the. Uh, they had the ten millimeter carbine for years. Yep. Twenty eighteen. And, the, and they said, all right, yeah. we, we've got the ten millimeter carbine. This is what the magazine looks like. They took the magazine and then they built a pistol around around that. Yeah, yeah they're like, I mean, but we want it well protected. Yeah, they're like build they, a, they they protect their magazines better than any other company. They do. So they like build them around this magazine. So all right, the obvious the obvious question it to yeah. for you is uh, if you've got the carbine. And you already have the magazine for it. I know you're not going to redesign the magazine, so you're going to you're going to build a pistol around the magazine. Hmm. You just 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 say that you are. I know. No. 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 I know. No. 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 no, 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 no okay. He I'm refuses. He refuses to admit it. <laughs> uh, but that, so that one has all of the. All of the stuff. It has the re, the shock absorbing recoil pad, the massive and, recoil and, shock absorbing pad. Yeah, the yep. shock that absorber in, in the uh, thing, and so why? 
Because you can? Well, obviously that, yes. Because you can is the simple, quickest reason on it. Mm -hmm. But the reality of this, the 30 Super Carry carbine falls in the same niche as the 380 carbine. Which, now time-wise, I can't recall when we dropped the 380 carbine. But when we did the 380 carbine, it's because all those pocket 380 pistols were like the hottest thing. Everybody and bought everybody a Everybody had 380 Everybody. Ammo. And so if the shooter who only has that gun as their self-defense thing, and they should have something other than this pocket gun mm -hmm. to run at home, the 380 carbine became the fruition for that. So, you know, a carbine is easier and better to shoot than a handgun. You got, oh, yeah, you got four contact. points of contact. Yeah. yeah. So the 30 Super falls in that exact same category, you know. You've got Smith and others putting out some of those 30 Super Carry handguns. So this carbine falls that same so exact niche. Let, let's go ahead and do a heads up. Uh, the 30, the 30 Super developed 30, was developed by Super Carry. Uh, thanks for asking. So you, that, we have to do that. Okay. So on on student of the gun, when everyone says 30 Super, we have to say, thanks for asking. Thanks for asking. <laughs> I'm super. Thanks, Thanks for asking. <laughs> All things considered, oh, I'm doing quite well. So the 30 super. <laughs> 30 Thanks super. For Thanks for asking. Thanks for asking. It's a very popular round. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh come on now. But it's uh, new. Come on. So you get you especially got, especially with those Mexican cartel guns, right? Oh, the cartel guys really That's like 38, 38 super. super. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, super. I'm sorry. Yeah, they like 38 different. super. Keep, yeah. an, keep an eye on that munchkin. Make sure it doesn't disappear. Uh, <laughs> so we have a special guest in the studio. Her name is Ruth, and she is an angel. <laughs> uh, and she's just watching. She always says, "Are you going to go talk to people?" <laughs> <laughs> why? Why are you, you do that a lot? Right? Why? Are you, why are you always talking to people? Because <laughs> it's what I do. <laughs> what I hey, do. I'm Paul Markle. Have we met? Also, I'm Mike Meyer. Meyer with M and M. Meyer with M and M. They make a case. Oh, uh -huh. they make very a nice a case. And yep, we love a case. We've been making a hybrid platform that's a crossover between an AK and FNFAL and AR and a Sig 550. So okay, I'm amalgamated. So. Right? That is that is quite a that is quite a child. Yeah. That is quite a baby. Right yeah. There. And he just dropped that on us. Just Are you like making that. it in in 100 in the US? Yes. In wow. 30 super. No, <laughs> uh, not yet. It's a 30 caliber, so <laughs> 762 by 39. You know, what I, uh, getting back to the 30 super. <laughs> so you've got you've got the 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 Smith compact gun, right. and then you have the who, who's making the the is, was it, it, is it Wilson or Night Force? No, Somebody, Night Force. Yeah, yeah, so you have really a, high in You have like a four hundred and twenty dollar gun <laughs> and a four thousand and a four thousand yeah. dollar gun and like nothing in between. They're making a 30 super. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, they when they, that was the, one of the first guns to be released in 30 Super. Was a, show that magazine again. <laughs> so show this right, 30 what's, Super what's, magazine. What's the MSRP <laughs> on this gun? I think it's 325. 325 MSRP. MSRP. Yeah. So that means you can go to your dealer and get it for 299. Yeah. More and how less. much is the ammo? I have no idea. And where can you get 30 Super? I, I have no idea. <laughs> you, can get, you can get for federal. Federal's got 30 Federal, Super. Federal's got it. Remington has it. Hornady's got a select load in it. Um, so Hornady they did? Hornady does too. Yeah. I did not know they yeah. pulled the trigger on I that. I couldn't tell you which one it is, but I've seen the data chart sheet that they've When got. are you going to do a 7.62 by 3.9 in a high point? I don't think I can fit that in a grip. No. I think you can. That's a beefy grip. I think Dude. you can work that I mean, that's got some girth to it, but I don't know if you can fit 762 by 39 in there. That's, I don't know. That's I, think, I think your engineers could. I, th I bet Mike could figure it out. I bet yeah. Mike could figure it out for you. He's an engineer. Shrink it down somehow. I mean. <laughs> what, or turn it or just angle it a little bit. Yeah, put it like in a tube-fed magazine. Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, that, that, right. Think I saw the box like a P90. You know, right. Total different orientation and make yeah, a mechanism just, and throw it in. Yeah, right. While you're bull crap Three degrees around. to the left. <laughs> it, it, it may be uh, the ship may have sailed. But the the real sleeper people are like oh but you don't you don't understand how the the thirty supers are thirty caliber bullet and it goes this fast and I said cool story bro <laughs> um, you want a super fast thirty caliber bullet yeah let's go back to when when did Takarov introduce that. Oh, that 18, was... 1898, 1890? 1890s, yeah, early yeah. 18... Yeah, it's like... Tokarov. Yeah, 7.62 yeah, by 25 now. is... Uh, what, I've, what I've been saying for years is somebody needs to call that. They need to come out with a gun and call it the 7mm Auto Mag. Why don't you go ahead and trademark that? 
Right. Just We're go marketed. ahead and trademark it. Seven, yeah. seven millimeter there. auto mag. And, and just, you know, the, th the 300 Whisper was a 100% ripoff of the J.D. Jones, or the 300 Blackout, I'm sorry. The yeah. 300 Blackout was a shot-for-shot shot complete ripoff of J.D. Jones's 300 Whisper that he did about 30 years ago. Yeah, well, it's his own fault for not marketing it properly. Exactly. I knew it was old. I didn't realize it was that old, though. 30 years to it. Wait, I mean, it, goes, it goes back to the 90s. I Are you familiar? That. You do anything with the 3 year blackout, Mike? Um, not much. I've been playing around with it, but not uh, nothing on a commercial level. Itself, okay. So. Yeah, I so mean, why do that when you get the 7.62 but 3.9, right? right? It gets, ballistically, it's almost the same, actually, and a lot cheaper, so. Yeah, yeah. a lot cheaper. And, a lot and, readily and for, available. Uh, for us, at least for me, is the design challenge was creating, generating firearm that has ammunition available all over the world. So you just have the options as either going with a 9mm or going actually with something that's in every single place on the planet, 7.62 by 39. The one big thing that most of the communists did really well was spreading their ammunition all over the globe. Yeah, no doubt. And they didn't care about any controls or anything, so you can find that ammunition in any place on the planet. And that's why I designed the they firearms need, They need to be spreading some 7.6 and my way is what they need to be doing. <laughs> well, <laughs> to, to, to be honest, the nicest thing is actually being able to return it. To return it. <laughs> I like With double the accuracy. To give it back so. to them. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 brother. I tell you what, there there may be somewhere an unopened ham can of that that's, that says, do not not open, you know, open it uh, in event of apocalypse. Yeah, apocalyptic, yeah. Yeah. I've only for Paul Markle's I've, hands I've, only. I've, right. told, I've told people, I'm like, like close friends, I said, if I ever post a picture of that ammo can cracked open. You know it's going down. Yeah, it's got it's got a, a duct tape. I've, I've got the can opener duct taped to it so it doesn't go away, you know? Because you got to have that. Oh, yeah. If you lose well, that, you're screwed. Oh, yeah. You're, you're you, know, well. you know what I did the first time I got one of those and I didn't have a can opener? I just took a wood chisel and a mallet and I was like... Chick, 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 chick. <laughs> All the around way the top, around the edge. I mean, what if it works? <laughs> you know what I've seen people do? Concrete. Concrete. Oh yeah, you you, you tip it upside and down. You and start. You, you just yep. go. What? Yep. So so till you grind the the, the edge of it out, and yeah. eventually yeah. you can get it and rip it open. Yep. Okay. You, you know that, that that's one. a survival hack if you've got a can. Of, That's somebody of, who of is food? extremely desperate that figured that no out. No doubt. <laughs> well, I gotta it takes about like an hour, cool. but never yeah, like that. That's, that's, that's actually a survival mm -hmm. hack. Like if you yep. you find canned food and don't have a can opener, okay. you just I didn't flip it over and, and rub it on concrete. Yeah, you can see. It's, it, it, because been. this is a fold over right here in every right. single can. So when right. you're actually just scraping the top on that fold, you can actually remove it and the whole thing pull pops out. Yeah. That's Interesting. Slick. See, the next time I can't open my beer, <laughs> you guys are you guys are all learning. Yeah, stuff you here. might have a different issue. It's gonna boil like, yeah. like but at least I'll get it. some of it. Yeah. yeah, that's right. No. So we brought Dave here to talk about high points and yeah. the, the thirty yeah. super. We got great content here. We got AKs and we got high points. I love this. <laughs> so Dave, talk about talk about your new thirty super. Yeah, High no, point. I mean carbine, just like a 995. We're talking a 16 and a half inch carbine, <coughs> you know, pistol magazine grip, well, uh, threaded half 28, so you can still suppress it. Not that I know if that's real popular with 30 super, but that's you know, okay. it's I mean, I haven't <laughs> tried. Just the fact that you can suppress it is right, yeah, right, enough. right. And you know, I love having the option available. Like all of our guns now are coming threaded standard because you can suppress all of them. Because why not? Yeah, you know, if you can do it, you should be able to. Exactly. It's that simple. That's actually something that that I was really excited about when you released the uh, this the Geek Cannon, mm -hmm. like Geek Cannon G1, right, with a threaded barrel. Yep. For those of you guys that don't know, uh, the Geek Cannon G1 or the or the C9 or whatever, yep. uh, they they have a fixed barrel. There are very few guns on the market that have fixed barrels, at least handguns or fighting style guns. Yeah, fixed yeah. barrels. I mean, uh, uh, at least in like nine millimeters. So your twenty twos do, mm -hmm. you know, like your Ruger does and stuff. Which which falls into because they all have that same action of being straight blowback action. Right, straight blowback action. So you know, with a twenty two can, if you're using if you're using a Ruger, you know, a twenty two forty five or something like that, you don't need any kind of springs or buffers or whatever. Right. You screw it right on the end of your Ruger, and you're and it's fantastic. And uh, if, if you don't know, you know, if you're shooting a nine, a normal nine millimeter, it's Glock or Sig or whatever, right. mm -hmm. um, or you know, even Yannick, yeah, Yannick, or, or you know, it, you've got to have also known as some type of a of a <laughs> of a buffing, buffer spring yeah, in a can, cup. a booster cup with a, it's because it's got to give, it has to give. 
Yep. But with carbines, you don't want that. Right. You want that not to be. And with a pistol, with a fixed barrel like the like the C9 or the Ecan G1, you don't need. You actually need to run it without. Yep, you're running the same. So way I just in our hand. I just had a company on you know, Marco's new uh, company. They're making some 3D printed cans, mm -hmm. and they're coming out with a nine millimeter one that you don't need a booster for. It's so light, you don't uh, you don't have to have a booster for. That's it. pretty cool. Yeah, um, that's very cool. See, in uh, the the rumor was that you could run uh, Berettas without them. That's what I've always been told. I've tried, and I, I and I don't get hundred. You don't get hundred percent reliability with the Beretta. You, you're better off having the. Because I say Beretta is the only one I knew of otherwise that you could, in theory, in yeah, run theory, in theory you could. Right. But I, but I found from experience that you need it. Right. You need to run better. Right. And it yeah, so that's, that's even with then so that G1 C9 threaded. And then mm -hmm. going to the new JXP 10 mil handgun, again, thread as well. Yep. Same thing. Again, are people suppressing 10 mil? I don't know. Right. But the options are you can. You're allowed. But if, yeah, but if we want to run non with the booster in it, just right. a fixed barrel adapter. And, and that's another reason that a lot of people uh, may not, because well, we're sitting, we're right across from Silencer Central. <laughs> uh, and that's what people Silencer might not Co. understand. All the silencer companies are right there. Silencer Shop. That's why pistol suppressors are made well besides they need to clean them is so they can be disassembled because if you're putting it on a pistol you need to have the spring but if you're putting it on a carbine you need to take that spring out of there otherwise your carbine is going to beat your freaking suppressor to death right and you definitely don't want that because they're not free <laughs> <laughs> no they're not no they're not free so uh Oh, we got another toy. We got we got a we got a, a Kalashnikov. Oh, it's, so I, we got an M and M. An M and M Kalashnikov. Thank you, sir. Oh, oh look at that. that. So, check this out. So continue, Gracias. continue, Conti Paul. All right. So, so well, this is the M10X. All right, the M10X uses standard Kalashnikov magazines. But it's an actually a design inspiration. It's a crossover between, I would say, a lot of the countries that I was exposed to growing up, uh, which is, uh, I spent, I'm originally from Switzerland, spent time in Venezuela, South America. Uh, I was going to say Boston, but... Okay. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Switzerland, okay. Spent, yeah, I grew up in South America, actually, in Venezuela, where they had the influence of the FNFAL. And then later on, when uh, it turned more communist, they got uh, influenced by the AK-47. And so you can see the transition as weapon tra platforms all across and pretty much this is how this started uh, as a design concept many years ago and uh, the idea was to create a firearm with half of the parts modern features that have been actually utilized in most battle proven rifles worldwide and making it easier simpler so it's an east meets west firearm system so it has also AR-15 design inspiration, has SIG 550 from Switzerland design inspiration, mm. and all the modern stuff that it's currently the latest in the U.S. market and the tactical side, such as M-Lock, QD mounts, suppressible 58 by 24 muzzle tread. So it is really a simplified what a Kalashnikov would be nowadays uh, with the global influence all across from different weapons platforms. So. Nice. It's, that's that's a beautiful piece of work right there. So it is uses standard AK-47 magazines. Yeah. But itself, it opens more as an a, like an AR or FN. So you push a button on the back. Oh, look at that! Ah, oh. there you go. Look so at that. Very simple. What we are always bragging about that we have half of the parts of all the aforementioned firearm systems and uh, double the accuracy in this caliber and actually half of the recoil. So it's half, double, half. <laughs> well, then you're taking away people's excuses to not hit the target. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a sad part of it. They're like, oh, his AK, AKs aren't accurate. Yeah, right. And so it's ambidextrous. You can actually use it from left to right charging handle and everything. And as you can see, very easy to field strip. And yeah. since we're talking about suppressors, uh, you can actually suppress it and it has gas. various gas settings. Gas settings, nice. And we're producing it all 100% in the U.S., so there is no foreign components on that, it. That reminds, awesome. me of the it uh, that's, this reminds me of the ARX-100. Are you familiar with the ARX-100? Yes. Yeah. 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 So it has, as I said, uh, nothing is completely unique. It's just it's kind of an amalgamation exactly. of several different designs, so which is what Kalashnikov did to make the AK-47. Right. Mm -hmm. And what we did was an amalgamation of successful designs nowadays and keep it very simple and easy to produce in the United States. So, so is this still considered an AK? 
It is sort of an I would ultimate say no. hybrid. That's uh, that's what you can call it. Inspired by. Yes, exactly. Actually, I just checked with CNN and they said that that's an AR-15. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I thought anything. it was AK-15. No, it's an AR-15 style. It's an AR-14. It's an, or it's an yeah. AR-47. You know what needs an AK-14. <laughs> right. So, so pop that slick. back in and show me how that works. So in order to put this thing back together, what you do is turn it over. Drop the part Drop the right bolt. there. The bolt. Yeah, that the bolt remi- that's very... That's, that reminds me of the FN right there. That, that, right. Yeah. So it has, as I said, a little bit of everything, but in every... All across it's half of the parts. So you saw that was complete field strip on it. Mm. So very simple, easy to change around, configure. You got an AR style selector switch. Right. So also oh, with half that. of the parts of any of the fermentation firearms. So very, very simple. And the recoil on this, it feels like a 223. It doesn't have the 30 kick or anything like that. People that shoot this rifle, they're normally coming back to us like, wow, this is a real pleasure to shoot. When we were having open range days and stuff, we, you've got everybody always coming back and they were like, I want to shoot it again. I want to have this experience just because how well this thing is balanced. Well, let's let, let's let's go ahead wow. and, and when we talk, we're talking about recoil. <laughs> let's go ahead and, and do a reality check. Americans <laughs> can be some of the most pusillanimous humans on planet Earth. Yeah. I, I, Paul, what does that mean? Yeah. Uh, what does that word mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know what pusillanimous <laughs> means. Pusil sounds a cross between puke and uh, platypus. Well, did, salami. Did you not? Gr- did you not grow up watching Bugs Bunny? I did watch yeah. Bugs Bunny. Then you know pusillanimous. But you know, I had someone say, "Well, it's a heavy. The AK is a heavy recoiling gun." I'm like, <laughs> "No, back no. up, pump the brakes, Jack." Nope. It, the, recoil starts at, at 308. It, it, it's like <laughs> it, that's where it starts. It's just like it, some people say it starts at 30 out six, but it's like, bro. 12 year olds in Africa are shooting AKs. <laughs> right. So, you, you, just, you know. Like this. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, you, you need to open up a can of man. To increase that. You accuracy. need. Yeah. Okay. The power. That's what the last thing that I saw when they were shooting. They were putting the side all the way to the 300 meters. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah because it, and I asked him, what are you doing? And they're like, uh, well. It, it's higher power. Do you think it's a throttle? It's like, oh, they, they oh, honestly they believe it's, it's a throttle. throttle. More power? Yeah. No. <laughs> then you put it to 300. It means, and it, it means that the bullet is going to make it to 300. Oh, if it's below, it's that, actually oh less power. No, that's a true story, bro. That's great. Talk, that's talk that's to nuts. any GWAT vet. Talk to dudes. Every You pick up a, a battlefield pickup of an AK in right. Iraq. Uh, and, 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 the, and the sights are like shoved all the way up. And they're like, do these dudes think they were actually going to shoot that far? No, they don't even even know what they're for. They literally oh thought God. that's how you like they don't turn aim. up the, the, turn the power. It's like the volume the on your power stereo. Up that they're on the gun. Up. So they would push them every almost do that. every battlefield yeah. pickup in oh Iraq or Afghanistan. They're they shoved, shoved, shoved all, the all the way up. Full power. <laughs> Full right. power. Yeah. Because I was talking to a bro of mine. I'm like, dude, what the f is up with all the KKs? Have, I mean, right. And, and he said, oh, and also, <laughs> you'll never pick one up off the ground that is on semi. <laughs> it's like they don't even know that one ex- exists. They, they, don't know know they don't know that setting exists. <laughs> they, they, you pick them up off the ground, they're on auto, and the sights are shoved all the way forward. Ask any GWAT vet, like right. a grunt or somebody who's been over there, That's they're hilarious. like, hence, hence the BS reputation of AKs not being accurate persists because of that. Because they're literally yeah. just spraying. Because spraying they are. 300 meters <laughs> Yeah. You can dry fire that wow. thing. And it's. Let me see. I take that light out. Boom. <laughs> Boom. It's the M10X. And so, Paul, you need one of those in your life. No, oh, I, I do. I do. No, I'm, I'm an AK dude. I love AKs, and I love FNs. And, uh, you know, I, I'm actually, uh, I'm trying you to put... You love ARs. You oh, love I, ARs I love ARs, too. too. Oh, no, because you're, you're like me. You're a gun guy. You, uh, if it yeah. shoots, you like it. I mean, yeah, I like it. I like I'm it. I'm not one particular brand or style. Hey, hey, right. hey, hey shipping ogre. How, right. hey, ogre, how long are we for this? Because we just go. Twenty. Oh, we're only twenty-two minutes in. Wow, this is in. We got another one coming up with uh, the girls from Tactical Response. Okay, all right. So, uh, ladies, did we say that we were in the Caltech booth at the NRA annual meeting, two thousand and twenty-three, Indianapolis? I don't know if you said that or not. Are you sure? I thought you were on the show. You know that. Oh, I don't. <laughs> so, Mike, any other features uh, with your rifle that we? 
I mean, I mean this is serious. There's so much on it. <laughs> there is so much. It, it, it really has a lot I, I, going I on. Like but this is one Rick of those that until, yeah. until you actually see it in person, feel it, and, and then obviously shoot it. Where can we go shoot this? Are you going to be set up at a range day coming near us sometime? Well, we're going to be uh, coming up. Recoil, mag uh, Recoil is actually doing their uh, suppressed shoot, which is called uh, CanCon. Can -Con. All right, Leadheads, that does it for those round of interviews from NRA covering our AKs, and I hope you enjoyed them. Pioneer Arms Corps, really excited about all the new offerings that they've got, especially the, the getting into the, the silencer market. I thought that was really cool. So the mouse, that 22 silencer that they've got coming out. And then we've got Marco coming up on a, another episode to talk more about specifically the the silencers and cans that uh, they're going to be bringing into the United States. So stay tuned for that episode. Uh, and then, of course, those accessories that they've got, you can go to their website, Pioneer Arms. It's pioneerarmsus.com. And uh, they've got the the magazines, those adapters, and I've I've been using the adapters and I really like them. Uh, I've got a couple of cans that I was able to use those adapters on, and they work really well. The uh, enhanced safety selectors really like those, uh, and then they've got some like Blim AKs that you can get for really good deals there. So go check them out. And then of course Mike Meyer and uh, Dave with High Point, Mike Meyer with M and M Industries. Talking about his M10X, that crazy uh, FNFAL AKAR SIG 5550 smash up rifle that they have made there in 7.62 but 3.9. Uh, really cool. We're going to get Mike on another episode and go into a little more detail about that rifle. Um, just didn't really have an opportunity because we had the Dave with High Point on there too, and uh, we had to cover both those guys. So, want to get Mike back on, talk, talk more about their uh, MX, their uh, M10X. So you may have noticed, obviously, I did not do a, a post asking for questions or really wasn't applicable to this episode. So I apologize. Uh, but we do, you know, we're still going to continue to give, to reward you listeners with Mission First Tactical product with SEAL 1 cleaning kits. So I want you to participate next episode. June's episode coming up when we make that post for asking for your questions and comments. Jump in on that because we're going to have, in addition to Mission First and Seal One, we're going to have some other cool giveaways that you're not going to want to miss. So uh, send me, email me, talkinglead at gmail.com. If you've got suggestions for the show, you've got um, topics or people that you'd like us to have on, companies, email those suggestions to me, talkinglead at gmail.com. And uh, we will definitely read those and take them into consideration and do our best to, to make it happen. Uh, just like this one from Leadhead Jason, uh, he emails us and says, AK Corner Topic. And that's a perfect subject. That way I know exactly what it's about. He says, I know it's a stretch, but how about doing a show on a company out of Poland that has kits and parts readily available? Might be a topic worth digging into. You did read my question on the last episode, and it seemed that no one knew much on this company. Uh, and I do remember this. It was WBP, and I am not even going to try to pronounce the name. Um, but they're out of Poland, Ro Rogal, Poland. Uh, and he says, it seems like Arms of America is the only one bringing them in country. One of their rifles was produced. One of the rifles they produce is the model Jack rifle. I was interested in their 545 kit that you can get and it's already head spaced. I guess I don't want to get burned like those Slovakian AK kits with bad head, bad heat treating and poor quality parts. Again, I know it's a stretch. I'm just trying to think of stuff you haven't covered. Uh, we've talked about kits before in the past. I mean, not specifically 545 kits. Um, and, you know, we did talk about 545s a little bit in this episode with CJ and you kind of got from a mat, from a, um, an importer, a distributor's take on the 545. Uh, they don't seem to have that big of a, um, a demand for them. I didn't necessarily agree with him because I think there's probably a little bit bigger demand than, than maybe what he realizes. But uh, yeah, um, you know, we'll get on. We'll, we'll, we'll try to get some more information on this WBP company out of Poland, which um, 
you know, that's where Pioneer Arms Corps is out of. They're out of uh, Rodham, Poland. So uh, I don't know. Maybe they've got some ties with one another. I'll, I'll see what I can find out. Uh, and then he finishes by saying, you did start this journey to learn. And I did. You know, that's why I started the AK Corners, because I was getting the AKs. And I wanted to learn more about them. So I thought, what better way than to just do a monthly segment on it and bring you lead heads along uh, on the journey. So I hope it's been, you know, this is our fifth fifth season of this. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Continue to enjoy it. We're going to bring you more next month. Again, get those suggestions for uh, people, products uh, that you want on the AK Corner specifically, guests, specific guests. Uh, and I know you've given me some in the past. Some of you have asked for some uh, some specific people's guests, and uh, we're still working on some of those. So you never know what's going to happen. So stay tuned each and every month for the AK Corner. And, of course, our regular, normal, scheduled program, the Talking Lead Podcast. Tune into that because we've always got great guests on it as well. We had the author Jack Carr on a previous episode talking about his new book, Only the Dead which I did finally finish that. And again, you know, he delivers. It's it's a great book and it leaves you wanting more. And I can't wait for that next Terminal List uh, sequel to come out on Prime. And then we talked about they're doing a couple of spinoffs uh, from that series too. So some pretty cool stuff to be, to be looking for from Jack Carr. And then we've still got a huge lineup from, from NRA that I'm still going to be dropping. So Pay attention to those episodes, and as you heard in the previous uh, regular episode, you know we've got another big giveaway that we're working on, and that is going to be coming very, very soon. And we'll have more details as we progress with that. We pretty much got everything locked down, locked in. Uh, just a couple of things we're waiting on, and then we can officially release it and make the announcement, but it's going to be really cool. You guys are going to love it. But thanks to uh, Leadhead Jason for your email. We appreciate it, uh, Jason. And if you've sent uh, sent me an email and I've not read it yet, maybe resend it because sometimes I get those I get so in, inundated with emails from not only you Leadheads but just you know from from companies and and other things that sometimes they get lost in the shuffle. So if I haven't read your email that you've sent me. Uh, resend them. If you've reached out to me on social media through Instagram or Facebook, just shoot me an email. And again, put the topic in there so I'll know, uh, you know, that AK corner sticks out. You know, I see that and then I know exactly and it helps me filter through all the junk too. So uh, be look. I'll be looking for your emails. And again, thank you guys so much for all your support and all the participation through our five years of doing the AK corner. And then, of course, our 10 years of doing the Talking Lead podcast. Couldn't do it without you guys. And, of course, we can't do it without our sponsors. So go show Mission First Tactical some love. Go show SEAL1 some love. MissionFirstTactical.com. SEAL1.com. Use the code LEADHEAD. Both those places. You're going to get 20% off at Mission First. You're going to get 25% off at SEAL1. Uh, and then Defiant Munitions makes really good 7.62x39 ammo. Uh, of course, they make other, they make 9, they make 556, 308, uh, 4570, high quality, accurate ammunition, all caps lead head, 10% off at Defiant Munitions. Medicine in bad places, use the code LEADHEAD20 or LEADHEAD, and you're going to get 20% off any of your uh, medical supplies that they sell there. They've got kits, they've got uh, a la carte products. So build out your your med kit for your car, for your home, uh, for your EDC, medicine in bad places is the place to go. Use that code. And of course, uh, our friends at Kraken Cases, we've been talking about them uh, ever since they came out. They've been a part of our the big giveaway we did in December. We gave away five of their cases in December. We gave away one at the NRA and this new big giveaway that I'm talking about got one of their new rifle cases that's going to be in that. So go to Kraken Cases, check them out. They've got some awesome product videos there, but that foam is really the piece to that case that sets them apart from everybody else. KrakenCases.com, Talking Lead, 10% off. All right, you AK fanatics, appreciate you tuning in. We will catch you next month, and I'll be looking for your emails and comments on social media. Hit us up.